Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to continue our discussion of stoichiometry, specifically mole mass conversions. Today's essential question Given the number of moles of reactant used, how can you calculate the mass of the products? Please remember to completely answer your essential question in your summary. Um, and for today's lecture, you need both handouts your periodic table and your unit conversion table. Oh, and a calculator. Let's start with a quick review on how to determine molar mass. So remember that molar mass is the mass of a mole, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, atoms or molecules, with the units grams. So our example, what is the molar mass of sodium sulfate, or Na2SO4? So the first thing we need to do is figure out how many, what type, and how many of each atom are in the molecule. So this is made up of two sodiums, a sulfur, and four oxygens. Now we look up the mass of each of these atoms on the periodic table. So sodium has a mass of 22.99 grams, sulfur has a mass of 32.07 grams, and oxygen has a mass of 16.00 grams. Remember, um, when we're looking at the periodic table to find molar mass, the unit is grams. Okay, so now let's list out those masses. Sodium, 22.99 grams. And sulfur is 32.07 grams. And our oxygens are 16.00 grams. Then we add these all up, giving us a mass of 142.05 grams. And the last step before we move on is sig figs. Remember, because we're adding these numbers, when we're adding, we don't actually look at sig figs, we look at number of digits after the decimal. And all of these have two digits after the decimal, so our final answer is 142.05 grams. And if you take a quick look at the periodic table, you will note that the majority of the atoms have two digits after the decimal. So usually when we're dealing with molar mass, usually we'll end up with two digits after the decimal. Okay, let's review the stoichiometry map really quickly. Um, I highly suggest you write out this map, mass known to mole known, to mole unknown to mass unknown, for each and every problem. It seems a bit like a waste of time, but it's a map. It'll keep you from getting lost. Okay, and then our conversion factors, we have the mole-mole ratio, which is mole known to mole equals mole unknown. Now, it's really important, these numbers come from, so the numbers are from balanced equation. Okay. Keep that in mind. Numbers for the mole-mole ratio come from the balanced equation. The other possible conversion factors are one mole of the known equals the molar mass of the known in grams. You calculate that from the periodic table. Or one mole of the unknown equals the molar mass of the unknown in grams. You will note that it says one mole one mole. Um, really, really important. Do not use the balanced equation. Okay, so for the molar mass one, you do not use the balanced equation. You use one mole. Because it's true that one mole of a particular atom or molecule weighs its molar mass in grams. It's not true that two, three, four, or five moles, or however many moles, greater than one, equals the molar mass off the periodic table. So again, for the mole-mole ratio, use the balanced equation. For the one mole equals molar mass, do not, do not, not, not use the balanced equation. All right, here we go, mole mass stoichiometry. So for each stoichiometry problem, write out this rule, or if you prefer, this map and use it as a map. 
please learn how to use the map. It, it takes a little practice, but once you learn how to use it, you're not going to get lost. Okay. So then after we've written out the map, filled it in, just do the three-step method. All right, and to learn how to do mole mass stoichiometry, we're just going to go through a practice problem. So our example we're going to use is calculate the number of grams of NH3 or ammonia produced from 4 mole of H2. And below we have the balanced equation. So the first thing we need to do is write out our math problem. So we know we have 4 mole of H2 and we're looking for the number of grams of NH3. So our math problem will be 4 mole H2 equals X grams of NH3. Okay, we have our math problem, so the next thing we need to do is fill out our map. So the molecule we know something about is our known, which is hydrogen or H2. So I'm going to put H2 in both of the known boxes. And our unknown, or the thing we're trying to find something out about, is ammonia or NH3. So I'll put that in the unknown box. All right, so what do we know about the known? Well, we know there are four moles, which means we can skip the mass box and in the mole box we'll put four mole H2. And what are we trying to find out with the unknown? Well, we're trying to figure out the mass, or grams. So, X grams and H3. So, we know mole known. We are looking for mass unknown. Um, and we can't jump over a box, so that means we also need to calculate the number of moles of unknown. Okay, let's set up the grid and solve our problem. I am going to go ahead and line the grid up with my boxes because that makes life easier. And we can tell by looking at our, our map that it's going to be a, a three-column, three-step problem, three-column grid. So we'll start by filling out what we know, which is 4 mole H2 over 1. All right, so now we need to go from mole known to mole unknown. How do we go from mole to mole? Well, we have an equality here that has the terms mole and mole in it. So we're going to use the mole-mole ratio. And remember, this is from the balanced equation. So looking at our balanced equation, our known is H2, and our unknown is NH3. So our equality is going to be 3 mole H2 equals 2 mole NH3. All right, we now need to put our equality in the grid, and we set it up so that we can cancel out units and molecules. So since we have mole H2 at the top, we're going to put mole H2 at the bottom. So we'll have 3 mole H2 at the bottom, which means the top is going to be 2 mole NH3. All right, so now for our stupid mistake blockers, let's make sure that mole H2 crosses out mole H2. It does. We're at mole NH3, which is where we expected to be. So, so far, so good. All right, so we are now at the location of mole unknown, but we want to get to mass unknown. So what equality has goes from mole unknown to mass unknown? or what equality has the words mole to mass? Well, let's look. Well, right here we have one mole unknown equals the molar mass unknown in grams. So we're going to use that one. K 
keep in mind we are not using the balance equation when going from mole to mass. We're going to use one mole of the unknown equals the molar mass of the unknown. And our unknown is NH3, so our quality is going to be one mole of the unknown, or one mole NH3, equals the molar mass of NH3. So the mass of N is 14.01 grams, two decimals after the digit, after the decimal, two digits after the decimal, sorry. And H is 1.01 .01 gram. Again, two decimals after the digit. So when we calculate the molar mass of NH3, we end up with 17.04 grams NH3. Um, and our answer should have two decimals after, two digits after the decimal. Okay, so now we need to put these numbers into our grid, setting it up so that units and molecules cancel out. So this time we're going to put one mole NH3 at the bottom and 17.04 grams NH3 at the top so that our mole NH3 crosses out mole NH3. We are at grams NH3 which is where we wanted to be so now we have set up the entire problem. All we need to do now is put it in the calculator. Okay, so when multiplying across the top, I came up with 136.32 grams NH3, and multiplying across the bottom, get three. All right, and then we divide, giving us 45.44 grams NH3. All right, so now the last step is to check our sig figs. We started out with four moles H2. Um, when we're using the mole-mole ratio, remember that those numbers are not included in the sig figs because they are not a measurement nor a calculation. And our molar mass can also be used as sig figs, and that's four sig figs. So we're going to have two or one sig fig in our answer from the four moles which means we're going to keep the 4, drop everything else. So we look at the first number we're going to drop, which is the 5, 5 or bigger, which is going to round up the 4, so we're going to end up with 5. Uh, but because we're dropping a number before a decimal, we need to put a placeholder. So our final answer will be 50 grams NH3, or if you prefer scientific notation, 5 times 10 to the 1 grams. And H3. Okay, and that's really all there is to mole mass stoichiometry. The biggest thing is to set up your map, to write down all of your units, to cross your units out to make sure you're setting things up right, and to be really careful when you put stuff in your calculator. All right, let's try another mole mass practice problem. This time, however, why don't you hit pause, try to do the problem by yourself, um, or as far as you can get, without getting stuck before you hit play again. All right, so let's try this. Um, so we have 625 grams of Fe304. That's going to be our known. That's what we know about. Um, is produced in a reaction. How many moles of hydrogen are produced at the same time? So hydrogen is what we're trying to find out. That's our unknown. So when we go to fill out our map, we are known is Fe304. And our unknown is hydrogen gas. And what do we know? We know we have 625 grams. Grams is mass. And we're trying to find moles. So, there, which means we do not need to use this last box, but we do need to pass through mole known. Okay, next let's set up our grid. I will line the grid up with my map to keep me, help me from getting lost. 
and I will put my known. Okay, so now we need to set up our grid, and I'm going to line my grid up with my map to help keep me from getting lost, which is probably the biggest issue with stoichiometry. And in the first column of the grid, I'll fill in my known, which is 625 grams, Fe304. So we've now finished this box. We now need to go from mass known to mole known. So what equality has the terms mass and mole in it? Let's check it out. Okay, we have this equality here, one mole equals molar mass in grams. Um, so we'll use that equality, um, keeping in mind it's one mole of the known. We do not, uh, I repeat, we do not use the balanced equation. We'll be using one mole of the known equals the molar mass of the known in grams. And we get the molar mass from adding up the masses off the periodic table. All right, so um, our known has Fe's and O's in it. And iron has a molar mass of 55.85 grams. Oxygen has a molar mass of 16 grams. And we, when we add up the masses of three irons and four oxygen, we come up with 231.55 grams. Um, and both of these have two digits after the decimal. So our answer needs to also have two digits after the decimal. All right, so our equality is going to be one mole of Fe304 equals 55, no, does not equal 55, equals 231.55 grams Fe304. All right, so now let's take our equality put it in the grid, setting it up so our, cancel, our units cancel out. So, because we have grams Fe304 on the, on the top, we need to have grams Fe304 on the bottom. And we'll put our moles Fe304 on the top. Our stupid mistake blocker, grams Fe304, crosses out grams Fe304. We're left at mole Fe304, which is where we expected to be. Okay, so since we're at, we've now arrived at mole known or mole Fe304, we now need to go to mole unknown. How do we go from mole known to mole unknown? Again, let's check it out. Okay, well here we have mole known to mole unknown. So the mole mole ratio using, this time, using the balanced equation. So mole mole ratio from the balanced equation. Okay, and our balanced equation, our unknown, our known, sorry, is 1 Fe304. And our unknown is 4H2. So our ratio is going to be for mole H2 equals one mole Fe304. Okay, so now we're going to put our ratio, our mole mole ratio into the balanced equation, setting it up so units cross out. And because we have mole Fe304 on the, on the top, we will have our mole Fe304 on the bottom, we've got that from here, and on the top is going to go 4 mole H2, which we got from here. Okay, stupid mistake blocker, mole Fe304, cross out mole Fe304, we're at mole H2, which is where we expected to be, and also our stopping point. So what we have left to do now is put the numbers in the calculator. Okay. So when multiplying across the top, I came up with 2500 mole H2. And multiplying across the bottom, I got 231.55. And 
when dividing, I came up with 1, 0, 0.7968 and so on, mole h2. Okay, let's check out sig figs. Our given was 625, which is three sig figs. Um, our, our molar mass was 231.55 which was five sig figs, and we don't use the mole mole ratio for sig figs, so our least number of sig figs is three, which is these three numbers here, the 10 and the seven, the one, zero, and seven. The first number we're gonna drop is a nine, which is five or bigger, which means our final answer is gonna be 10.8 mole H2. There you go. So, as you can see, mole mass stoichiometry is not overly difficult as long as you're really, really careful. Again, use the map. Learn how to use the map. It's well worth your time. Be very careful about your units and your molecules. Cross them out. Double check yourself all the way along. And then be really careful when you put numbers in the calculator, checking your sig figs, and that's all there is to it. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.